and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about the color pink that's right it's time for our the next uh, entrant into our ongoing series of exploring colors and today pink so pink is a fascinating color uh, just to talk about it and sort of what it is pink is effectively it's sort of like a tinted red tint just means to add white but it's actually a little more complicated than that. It effectively occupies the space in between red and magenta. Uh, there are lots of variations in pink. Uh, lots of them tend to have a little bit of bluish color in them. For example, just the standard Vallejo pink here. You can tell that that isn't just red plus white, but that there's a slight blue hue to that. You see this occur a lot in nature. A lot of things that we would think of as being uh, pink in nature often have a bit of a blue hue to them. Some of them can be just more, where you really see the blue is when you hold these two next to each other, this one being this traditional bubblegum pink, being more of a uh, just sort of red plus a high tint. Uh, obviously, it also comes in fluorescence. You see pink show up a lot in things like synthwave designs. And down here, I've got a series of colors. This is uh, Harvester Flesh from Scale 75. This is actually brown rose, uh, but you can see it's a very pinky color. And then over here, we've got pale pink. Uh, these two are obviously intended as sort of Caucasian flesh tones. Now, pink as a word, as an identification of a color, didn't really come into existence or usage until the 17th century. Uh, and so in many languages, they still don't use the word pink, um, but instead they just use rose. Um, and rose is obviously, we think of a lot of roses as often there are many pink colors of roses. Pink itself is named after the flower, the pink flower. Uh, it's the name of the flower. And so that's where the color gets its name from rather directly. Um, pink does occur in nature quite frequently. Uh, whether it be we think of things like sunsets where because of the, uh, because of the Rayleigh scattering, the sunset can appear, the, the horizon, I should say, can appear as pink, or whether we're talking about crystals or, um, you know, lots of natural flowers. There are pink, plenty of pink animals. Uh, Caucasian skin tone is often referred to as often being very pink. Um, you have algae that can turn pink, uh, you know, shrimps and lots of seafood or meat, uh, you know, that hasn't been cooked or whatever. Like pink is a fairly frequently occurring nature. We've all uh, ordered a steak and the question has been kind of, you know, should it be pink in the middle or something like that, right? So uh, pink is a really interesting color because it does occur, unlike a lot of colors we've reviewed so far, it does occur quite frequently in nature and it's quite eye-catching. Um, pink has a very high brightness, uh, usually because of the sort of white content of it. Uh, naturally occurring pigments that were used in art for a long time uh, were made by mixing uh, white pigments into other pigments uh, to get a nice pink color. Um, pink became very popular in art as a skin tone throughout the Renaissance period, usually in the 15th, 16th, 17th century. Um, you would see a lot of artists using, you know, pink influenced tones, something like that. Uh, to do a lot of skin tones and indeed to this day lots of miniature paints uh, Still have influences of a lot of pink. So for example our Bugman's glow here has a lot of purple But there's still certainly a bit of a pink resonance to that as well um, So you see that show up a lot um, Culturally obviously pink in at least modern America where I'm more familiar with uh, pink tends to be associated with uh, female or with, with females. Um, it tends to be a girl color, quote unquote. But of course, that's not, uh, it's not restricted only to that. And in fact, that is a historical switch. Um, pink in clothing became popular for women in the 20th century when dyes were became strong enough, or we had artificial dyes that could actually survive the washing process. Um, so it was actually quite rare that you had anything but a very faded pink in clothes, or if you did have pink clothes, you were very, very wealthy because you would have a special dress made and then wouldn't really need to wash it. You would only wear it once. Most um, folks couldn't, like a, a regular pink dye would come out in the wash and so you didn't see pink in a lot of clothing until the 20th century. 
Uh, in the early 20th century, pink was actually more associated with boys and with the male gender. It was seen as uh, blood and having vitality and sort of violence and things like that. So pink was seen as a very male color. Blue was seen as a very female color. Sometime around, you know, our, it tends to argue of exactly when. There's lots of different cultural milestones, whether it be famous uh, women wearing pink dresses or, you know, movies or the use of color or marketing and displays or children's toys, like whatever. It's hard to say exactly. It's just there was a cultural shift that moved pink over to being a color specifically more associated with women. And indeed, to this day, you'll still usually see like a whole bunch of stuff end up being colored pink for no good reason if it's intended for women, uh, women's razors or other associated types of things. And those often will also uh, have a bit of a, a price markup for no good reason other than they're for women, hence the use of the term the pink tax, which you'll hear sometimes. So uh, at any rate, Pink is a great color to use in painting because not only can we use it for things like skin tone, uh, if we're aiming for a softer, uh, it tends to have this sort of feeling of softness to it. And so if you're trying to paint somebody who looks very feminine or very innocent or very young, pink skin tones will tend to resonate that emotion. Pink over here can also be really influencing because it can be great to just be eye-catching. So I mentioned the synthwave schemes earlier. Those are very popular and can be very powerful when it comes to, uh, you know, making an army that really stands out from five feet away. So uh, on my palette, I've got some of the regular pink and right here, I have a squig. So let's make a pink squig. Uh, we're gonna not use a skaven for once. Um, but obviously we can have lots of different colors of pink. Here I'm using, again, this is just Vallejo pink. And one of the things about pink that's going to become obvious right away when we put it on is that it's a very, uh, it's a very weak color in and how the pigment is formulated in most cases. And by that, what I simply mean is it tends to still be quite transparent, especially when you go to something like the fluorescent pinks, um, they just don't cover well. Now that's a factor of fluorescence as much of a factor of anything else, but the pink still having largely a lot of red influence means it does remain relatively uh, transparent. So if we to look at like our fluorescent pink here, let's just put a little bit of that up top. You'll see that that obviously a lot shows through there. I can still see a lot of gray, especially as I smooth it out, right? Very patchy paintwork there. Now, when it comes to working with pink, the one of the important things to do beforehand, because it is transparent, is focus on the undershading. Much like we talked about with yellow before, having a bright undershade is really important. Now, unlike with yellow where I needed to turn everything warm, so that those brown tones, and those ivory tones would show up through the yellow and make it naturally very bright. You can stick to a cold scheme with pink. As I said, pink often does have some blue in it. So having a sort of blue or cold gradient of zenithal underneath uh, is perfectly fine. However, uh, pink often can take a few coats to get on there. And if you want it to be bright, if you want a really bright pink, I think a lot of people's thought is, well, I'll go to something like this. This is uh, titillating pink, which is meant to be uh, a mix of the old uh, 88, you know, late 80s, early 90s Citadel colors. So they go to something like a bubblegum pink to get that bright color. And it's true, you can get something, these extremely bright pastel bubblegum pinks will cover a lot better, okay? Um, still not great, but better, partially because they just have more white in them. But the real answer is not to try to change the pink color you want to use. The real answer is to simply uh, make sure that you have a bright undershade. So just like with the yellows or reds or any other highly transparent color, by having something that's bright white underneath 
that's going to make the color itself pop more. Okay. Now, one of the um, one of the great tricks here is that you can use other pinks to undershade pinks, and specifically in the uh, in the Caucasian flesh tone range is where you can have a lot of success with that. We've talked about the power in a recent video of universal highlight colors. And things like light flesh or this pale pink or, you know, any color in this range. So, for example, here's the light flesh from Vallejo. You can see those are pretty close, right? So, any of those colors can be fine to undershade with. So, for example, if you were zenithaling your model, maybe instead of using white, you use something like a pale pink or a light flesh or something like that and that's going to make the pink color pop more, okay? Now, if you uh, don't have that super bright color on there, that's okay. You can still highlight pink. Now, there's lots of choices of what to highlight pink with, but my honest answer is don't use white, which sounds strange. But the reason I say that is because ultimately pink is already a quite desaturated color. Uh, it just, because of the, the nature of how these pigments are created, it will tend to already have quite a, a, a level of desaturation to it. By adding a lot more white, you can tend to sort of kill the impact of the color very fast. So instead, what I've used here for this highlight that I'm just wet blending out real quick, there we go. What I've used for that instead is our good friend ice yellow. That would sound strange to combine yellow with pink, but in fact, they're just natural partners and they go together very well. And you can see how that provides a much more naturalistic highlight. It makes it feel like it's in that sort of, uh, like it's in an environment, you get a nice natural color. Uh, ice yellow is my favorite thing to highlight pink with, okay? Now, that being said, of course, you could use flesh tones, which we've talked about in previous videos. You could use like a pale pink or a harvester flesh or something like that, some kind of Caucasian influenced skin tone, light flesh, whatever. You could use a lighter color pink. So for example, maybe here's where you could use your more bubblegum pinks that tend to occur in the range. But I do want to warn you that that's going to create a very different effect, right? You're going to get this sort of non, let me move my light here so I'm not quite as bright, there we go. That will get you a sort of, it will actually color shift the pink over and could feel a little strange. Uh, ice yellow to me, just one, you get better coverage than you do out of any of the pinks. Two, it tends to provide a more naturalistic highlight. Now, when we're talking shadows, since I like ice yellow and to use a bit of a warmth in my upper pink, uh, since it has that red influence and it's a little warm, for me, I like a good purple tone. So here I've got some Elendil Violet, uh, but you can use any color. When we're talking purple, I will say I like to have purples that are influenced in the blue spectrum, which probably sounds strange out of the gate because the squig itself or the pink itself, again, feels red and white. Why would we introduce blue? Well, as I mentioned earlier, these colors do have a little bit of blue in them. And so by introducing the purple color, we can actually get a pretty nice mixture. Now, I just threw that on there, nice and thick. And by starting in the blue spectrum and then bringing it together, we get a nice cold shadow for the warm pink, which in general, feels pretty good. Uh, it's just going to feel like a pretty natural extension of that color. Okay. Fairly nice naturalistic tone to again match with our warmer shadows. Or sorry, our warmer highlights, I apologize. Um, but purple doesn't have the hard hit that something like blue might have that would be a very different experience. Okay. So, you can see there how we get a really nice, fun transition between those colors. Um, for me, 
that kind of purple to ice yellow uh, with the pink as the middle, as your mid-tone, just ends up feeling really good. Now, other colors you can use to shade your, your pink, you can certainly go into more of a red tone, so you could get out more of like a deep magenta or crimson. That would certainly work if you wanted to stay completely in the pink spectrum. You can move into a more crimson, a more deep magenta, anything like that. Um, you can get out something more blue. So if you wanted, if you do want to push the whole thing super blue, then something like a deep blue or a Payne's gray ink, that can also work very well. So uh, there you go. That's pink. Um, in the end, remember your keys when you're painting with pink are start with your undershade, make sure it's nice and bright, um, that you want a good amount of white or a bright ivory if you want it to feel a little more or a little more warm, but you want a nice bright undershade because it's really going to show through. And if you want that pink to pop, if you want poppy pinks, then you've got to have a bright color underneath. When you're talking about highlights, you have a lot of choices from your existing uh, Caucasian bright flesh tones or light fleshes to your ice yellows uh, or anything like that. But this is my particular favorite. Again, you can see how that looks there. When you're talking about your shading, just think about how you want your shadow colors to move. Uh, I like a nice blue purple, like a blue violet color, uh, as that then creates a nice spectrum from a warm pink highlight to a cold bluish influenced shadow. But again, your mileage may vary. If you want to go more cold, then you lean more into the blue. If you want to stay more warm, then you stay in the magenta or the deep crimson or something like that. All of those are going to feel perfectly fine. It's just about capturing the paint scheme you want. So there you go. That's exploring colors pink. There's our little bubble gum our little piece of chewed bubble gum ready to go out it's just it's like a piece of bubble gum with teeth stuck in it uh so with that i do hope you enjoyed that give it a like if you did subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future if you've got any questions feel free to pop those down below i always answer every question but as always i very much appreciate you watching this one and we'll see you next time